Today, we're hanging a vintage axe head. Hi everyone, I'm Ira, welcome back to the channel. Today, we're going to hang this handle onto this axe. If you haven't seen the video where I carved this handle, check that out right up here. And if you haven't seen the one where I restore this vintage Swedish axe head, well, check it out as well. You can check out those videos before you watch us hang this. So without further ado, we're going to um, move the camera and get this to the shave horse and hang the axe head. All right, the first thing we're gonna do is redraw the eye hole just onto the handle. Make sure it's in the right spot we want it. We're gonna try and take this down to that spot. Let's just give it a little tap. And that's going to show us Make sure it's straight where we want it to be, and it is. Okay, so that little tap, now we're gonna take that off, and that's gonna give us a line and some marks to say, okay, this is where you need to take off more material. So now that we kind of got it like that, instead of pounding the head, we're actually going to pound the handle. Just give that a little tap to set it on there. And now we're going to hit the handle and that inertia of this ax head is going to drive the handle in. Okay, and then that's going to tell us where we need to cut. You can see those dark marks there. That's, and there's ridges where it's telling us we need to cut. Smooth that down so that it can go on further. And, and then it's just rinse and repeat, so do that until you get it to fit right around where you want, which I think for us, we want the bottom of the ax to sit right about there. Yeah, so there'll be about three quarters of an inch sticking out the top. Okay, I'm back once that's done. This is where I find it easier to actually take my Sloyd knife and carve away these pieces because it's not locked into the vise or the shave horse. And now I can start to feel where where it needs to be taken away. And a little more control over how much I'm taking away. Carving oak with a whittling knife kind of sucks. It's a bit hard to do. Okay, let's see how far that's getting in there. All right, so it's going through a little over halfway. This one's a bit tricky. I'll keep working on it 
I've hung a lot of axes in my day, but this one seems to really be causing me trouble. So let's put that together and hopefully this is the last one. Okay, so that's poking out through the top and that's looking pretty good. Okay, so now we're gonna take that out of there and that's the tough part is taking it out of here. For this one, not usually, it's not usually that much of a problem, but for this one, for some reason, I can't seem to get the head off, which means it's a nice tight fit, which is good. So we're going to cut a slot in there, in that part, and then cut a wedge and wedge it up and then we'll have a nice ax and put some oil on it and maybe do some finishing carving bits here and there to make it feel good. All right, use my fancy new Japanese pull saw here. Okay, we're gonna try and cut it to about here. This is where it is at the bottom and I think right maybe two thirds of the way through. It's about where we want it to be. Give this side, give myself a little more room. Try my new stool up there. Close to where we want it to be. Okay. I'd say that's about right. It's deep enough. I'm just going to clean off this finish so I can draw my wedge. A little off cut from the last wedge I made. gonna do a little last minute shaping of the palm swell here before we put the head on. Okay, so this is it, let's put it together. So we got our line cut in there and now we're just going to hit this with a hammer, big mallet and sink it in. Okay, that is in pretty good. So let's get the wedge in there. Here's our wedge. Make sure it's in the right spot. And start to drive it home. Ugh. Okay, so now let's saw it off. And we want to leave a little bit sticking out. Mm -hmm. 
Now that looks good. Give that a little chamfer and then put some oil on the handle. Do this real carefully because you don't want to wreck your knife. There we go. I think that looks pretty good. Okay, the last thing to do is to put a coat of boiled linseed oil on just to make sure that it's all nice and protected. And we'll just oh, like this. And just get it all nice. Every little bit there back, bottom. And when you're doing your ax and linseed oil, put some on the blade too, on the head. It only protects it, especially where we cleaned those um, edges there. We really like to have a drip here. Oh, it's more than a drip. <laughs> Just to get it all soaked into that and let that swell up even more. Okay. It's all lots of that. Okay, so we'll let that sit for a minute and then I'll wipe it down. All right, thanks for joining me for this ax restoration and handling. I think the ax is pretty much done. All we need to do now is make a sheath for it and give it its final sharpen. So next video, we will do a how to sharpen an ax video, um, give this a good proper sharpening and, uh, and then we'll make a sheath for it. So stay tuned for that video um, for now. If you want to see more of my ax videos, including the video where I carve the handle and the video where I restore the ax head, you can click here. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. That really helps me out. And if you drop a like on this video, that lets YouTube know that people like my videos and people want to see them. Stick around for the next video in this series where we make a mask for this axe. This is going to be great base camp bushcrafting axe. I can't wait to get it out to the woods and see what it can do. All right, well, thanks for watching. Until next time, I'll be me, you be you. Peace.